call to our third district BFW Ohio Americanism Banquet and testimonials. Uh, please stand for the invitation given by Richard Lister for our new chapter. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for uh, for uh, allowing us to be Americans and blessed. Lord, thank you for District Three. And thank you for the BFW. Lord, I pray for those of you who are at home, for those that are less fortunate than us, that we are blessed to serve. Lord, thank you for programs that we can have, the blessings that we can have, such as Americanism and our flag. Thank you in your name. We will now recite the Pledge of Allegiance, led by our Voice of Democracy winners. Voice of Democracy winners, would you please step forward? Present hope. should not be dipped to any person or thing. Regimental colors, state flags, and organization or institutional flags that are to be dipped as a mark of honor. Also, the flag should never be displayed with the union down, except as a signal of dire distress in instances of extreme danger to life or property. The flag should never touch anything beneath it such as the ground, the floor, water, or merchandise. The flag should never be carried flat or horizontally, but always aloft and free. The flag should never be used as wearing apparel, bedding, or drapery. It should ne never be fastened, drawn back, nor up in folds, but always allowed to fall free. Bunting of blue and white and red always arranged with the blue above, the white in the middle, and the red below. Should be used for covering a speaker's desk, draping the front of a platform for decoration in general. We are all guilty of this every single day. We've all broken everything that's in here. Uh, the flag should never be fastened displays, used, or stored in such a manner as to 
per permit it to be easily torn, spoiled, or damaged in any way. The flag should never be used as it for a covering for a ceiling. The flag should never have placed upon it, nor any part of it, nor attached to it, any mark, insignia, letter, word, figure, design, picture, or drawing of any nature. The flag should never be used as a receptacle for receiving, holding, carrying, or delivering anything. There's another one that we're all guilty of every single day. The flag should never be used for advertising purpose in any matter what's whatsoever. It should not be embroidered on such articles as cushions or handkerchiefs and the like printed or otherwise impressed or paper napkins or boxes or anything that is de designed for temporary use and discard. Advertising signs should be fastened to or staff or hallard from which the flag is flown. No part of the flag should be used as a costume or athletic uniform. However, a flag patch may be apprived, which is this is what the NFL does, they put it on their sleeve, um, a uniform of military personnel, firemen, policemen, and members of patriotic organizations. The flag represents a living country and it's in itself considered a living thing. Therefore, the label flag pen being a replica should be worn in the left appell near the heart, because that's where the flag belongs. The flag, when it is in such conditions that is no longer a fitting emblem for display and should be destroyed in a dignified way, preferably by burning, which is, that's the proper way to retire a flag. You properly burn them. You, you know, if it touches the ground, you burn it. If it's been decommissioned, you burn it. It's the proper way to do it. And all these protests going on right now, uh, I believe that the flag should have nothing to do with that. But I, but I wrote a poem anyway, because I, I write poems, I'm good at it. Okay. It's called, I Am the Flag. I am the flag, I stand for freedom. I am one thing that can't be beaten. I have 50 stars that represent our states. I represent, represent the key for freedom beyond those gates. I have seven red stripes and six white for the ones who have lost their life. Francis Scott Key wrote an anthem about me to show what it means to be free. I have been flying from war to war. I fly for the honor of the Corps. I represent the sacrifice of the fallen for those who came to the calling. I represent honor for our country. Handle me with care, don't let me sunder. For I'm there to honor the dead. On my flag it symbolizes the red. My 13 stripes represent the 13 colonies. I am placed on the ca casket of the dead. For I may be disrespected, the Constitution should protect it. Honor me, my pledge, to help me and not judge. The purity of my flag is pure. It's what you need, that's for sure. I am a symbol of respect, something that some families will never get back. Honor me as I fly high. Sal salute the ones who have died. God bless the red, white, and blue. Salute me, it's the right thing to do. Thank you, guys. The VFW holds a yearly Voice of Democracy and a Patriot Pen contest at the post, the district, and the state level. This year, our district winner won the state competition and will compete at the national level on April 1st. Here to tell us more is the Voice of Democracy State Chairman, Gerald Constable, and our District Voice of Democracy Chair, Josh Atwell.
what I'm going to do is just give you a little bit of the statistics about this before we go into the actual presentations, and I'm going to turn it back over to Josh for that. Um, just as an idea, the Department of Ohio is one of the top departments in the U.S. for doing the voice of democracy. When the kids show up at National, the students, um, most of them say, oh, you're from Ohio, that's such a great program they've got, we've heard a lot about it, because we do such, I think, a great job for promoting the program. This year, we were down a little bit on our numbers because of COVID, it just affected everything. The students weren't in school, it was a, it was a much more difficult year. But still this year, we had, out of the 330-ish posts we have in the department, 99 posts participated, with a total of 925 students representing it throughout the year. Total post awards were $25,450. Total district awards totaled over $22,000 with department awards and scholarship totaling over $36,500 this year. So our grand total at this time for the department was $95,429 with all the awards and other expenses that were given out to all those, those 925 students across the department. Um, just as an example, um, Owen's award for the department is $8,000 scholarship. So. We actually give out uh, almost, um, I think it's just shy of $30,000 in total scholarships across the department, but it's $8,000 for first place. So just, just to let you know how much those go, go forward. And we'll get back to the rest of the presentations. I'm turning over to Josh now. Afternoon. Afternoon. This is my first time heading up the district for Voice of Democracy. But the kids we had and the party they gave me made it look easy for me. So thank you. Uh, we had top three that we're going to honor here today. The first is going to be Faith Bergeron, here to accept that award. Fred Rojas, Commander 9550. Cool. from our post was not able to come here due to a conflict um, today. So on behalf of Faith Bergeron and the uh, Faith District from Post, thank you. In second place, here to read her entry for us, Priya Petty. Extinguished because we as Americans 
American citizens wanted to quench our thirst for equality by securing fair, fair and equal rights for all members of American society, regardless of ethnicity, gender, or age. This honors the Declaration of Independence, which declares that, quote, all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Equality upholds the value of liberty by encapsulating its core theme, freedom for all. Second, we enjoy the benefits of liberty through the value of discipline. We must remember that with extensive freedom comes enormous responsibility. We must strive to be faithful stewards of what has been given to us. Discipline is a necessary component of ensuring that our communities grow, our resources abound, and our families thrive. Being disciplined in work, school, and play ensures growth, success, and stewardship. From the early years to the present day, American citizens have worked hard to earn a living for themselves and their families. Farmers grow and harvest crops, doctors help the sick, teachers instruct students. An evident example of discipline in American society today is the transition from high school to college to work to family life for a modest American teenager. Discipline is required to successfully complete high school, learn and grow in college, and complete the training necessary to earn a good job and provide for a family. Discipline provides order and healthy women. Finally, we enjoy the benefits of liberty through the value of democracy. This value is most evidently protected through the system of government and lawmaking in our land. The Constitution and Bill of Rights are two sources of security for the liberty we enjoy today. The Bill of Rights grants every person, every individual American citizen, the right to assemble, the freedom to speak, and the privilege of practicing religion, just to name a few things. Another important example of democracy is the ability to elect government leaders. Each of America's founding documents guarantees freedom, freedoms we still enjoy today. These liberties surround us everywhere. As Calvin Coolidge said, quote, the main effort of our revolutionary period was to bestow upon the individual a larger freedom guaranteed by the authority of law. In conclusion, this is the country the founders envisioned. Liberty was both precious and prestigious to our founding fathers. Today, we experience the privileges of liberty daily, most significantly through the common values of equality, discipline, and democracy. Equality acknowledges that all American citizens deserve freedom and fair treatment. Discipline ensures that we work hard to protect and provide for ourselves and others. Democracy protects our freedoms. Liberty ruled and reigned in the founders' hearts and souls, and today lives on in the lives of we, American citizens. We are, quote, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. The founders dreamed of a land of liberty, and today we are living that dream.
I feel that we are exactly what our father, founding fathers wanted us to be. The sole reason being that we are free. The United States was founded under the basic principles of individual choice, liberty, and freedom. The founding fathers sculpted their ideas, they sculpted their ideas of perfect democracy by living through the hardships of a tyrannical leader. They knew by experience what it felt like to be denied independence, forced to obey and submit to someone who had their own priority above the welfare of the people. This is why we rebelled in the first place, in order to ensure that we, the people, were ensured justice, liberty, and free will. We, the people, that first sentence in the Constitution tells us that we, the people of the United States, not only have the power to shape the nation as we please, but the ability to control our own destiny. No matter the circumstances of a democracy, we are free, and that is what matters the most. Almost 250 years into the future, I feel that we have forgotten this. Our forefathers designed the United States in hopes of creating a nation that strived for peace, justice, and prosperity for all. Writing the laws and enacting the movements of common well-being would be the citizens of this newborn nation, dedicated to bringing the best life possible to their peers and future generations. Yet, as I look around me, all I can seem to find in today's society is division. Taking a step back and realizing that we are all Americans, and that we all want what is best for our country, and our people is what the Founding Fathers would have wanted out of us. They would want us to choose to cooperate together in order to form a more perfect union. There is no right or wrong answer, only the best answer, which should be the answer that defines who we are, benefits the people the most while giving us the most rights to exercise as a freely American citizen. So next time you find yourself in doubt of our future, Remember how the founding fathers adjusted this country. They did not have a path for us to follow, for we as Americans must forge our own path, using our independence and our free will to create a brighter future for ourselves and the next generation to come. The founding fathers have bestowed upon us the power to choose our own destiny. <coughs> and I can collectively speak for the average American citizen that in this day and age, the ability to choose is more important than ever. Never lose hope in the United States of America because the power to change our nation into a more perfect democracy will never fade as long as we have patriotic, educated, and pure individuals who strive to make this nation what our founding fathers wanted it to be, free. Thank you. Congratulations, 
And for those that may not be aware, on the 1st of April, they will be doing the live stream. Um, a live stream on the VFW website of all of the national uh, finalists. So all of the department finalists that are up there, there'll be 53 of them that are being recognized. Um, so please get on, you check it out on vfw.org. Um, there's a link there that will be streaming, I think, starting at 7 p.m. on the 1st. And so if you your watch parties, and let's cheer on Owen. Please, you can join the auxiliary if you have a immediate family veteran. So we would love to have you. Your hearts are in it. So you have an open invitation to join the auxiliary, men and women. I've been a member of the auxiliary for 19 years. I've learned a lot over the years and a lot this past year with the COVID. But we have managed with our auxiliary to our auxiliaries to work outside the box. They're doing a fantastic job. And we commend them for it. My family had uh, many members in the service all the way back Spanish American War to now. We were raised to honor and respect the veterans and the flag. Our veterans showed us commitment above and beyond. The women and men showed us bravery, sacrifice, integrity, friendship for one another, and protected one another. And most of all, showed their love for their country against all odds. They were loyal, comfort. They were loyal, comfort, fellowship, and we need to uplift them. We need to remember our veterans that have gone before us. 
We're here to honor them for what they sacrificed for us at home. We also are here to honor the deceased. We are here to make our communities better in which our veterans live. Please honor our flag also. The United States flag shows our freedom and our love for our country. I want to thank my auxiliaries in our district to represent them in the past year. It was a very challenging one. We made it through. I thank my auxiliaries for all their hard work. Let's keep challenging ourselves for our veterans. Always thank a veteran, always. Go one better, pay for a meal, invite him to a dinner or her to a dinner and sit and chat. I want you to know veterans are lovable and they have interesting stories of their experiences. So now, God bless our veterans, God bless our auxiliaries, God bless our flag, and God bless our country. Thank you. Please welcome our District 3 Commander, Mike Malone. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, this is a great day to have an American as a Banquet slash uh, testimonial. We combine them both, of course, for uh, time and uh, what has occurred and, and uh, what we're dealing with. Uh, so I'm going to give my testimonial on how proud I am of 3rd District here in a minute. Uh, but first I wanted to comment on the speeches. Wow. Wow. And you know, that's just, you know, obviously there's the winner and, and, uh, and the runner-ups, but that gives you a picture of the students, what, what the students are putting in. Because that's representation uh, of, of the whole district. There was, we had many, many entries out there. Uh, and uh, I just say, wow, wow to that. Uh, I, I was really impressed with your speeches and and Owen, good luck to you on uh, in, in April. I, I, I hope you win. I'm rooting for you, of course. Thank you. Of course. Good, great yeah. job. Great job. Um, and I wanted to talk about the uh, uh, the flag that uh, Brandon uh, had had so nicely told us the law, and that's public law. That's public law um, because our flag is a symbol of our country, not our government. That is different. We must make that distinction between country, all of us, countries, all of us, government, we, we can't agree on anything, okay? We get that, we get that, you know, that, that, that's the way, way the democracy in the country was set up. It was set up to be adversarial, okay? It was set up to be, but it was not upset, it was not set up for us to start modifying, modifying the symbol of our country uh, for our own political gains. So if you see it done, try, try to convince people this is a symbol of our country, not our government. You know, it's a symbol for all of us. Uh, people, uh, people that disrespect the flags, the first people they look at is veterans. Why? Not, not because we're the only ones offended, because we care more. We, we served and we care more, I get that. Uh, but everybody in the country should be offended if the flag's being disrespected. Everybody, not just veterans. Everybody, because it's a symbol of us, all of us, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, everybody. We all fall under, under that. E pluribus unum. It's Latin for out of many, one. One country, one nation. Uh, so please remember that. Uh, uh, I'll get off my horse on this. Uh, the, the, uh, she said, you know, she said, uh, uh, Frida, is it Frida? Priya, Priya, I'm sorry. Uh, she said, uh, she said, uh, uh, enormous responsibility and discipline. If we're if we're continue to be a free country, we're going to have to show that responsibility and dis distance, uh, discipline. So if you see something, say something, just like any other threat, uh, because you know uh, a threat to our country is a threat to our country, and, and we must protect our flag. Um, the other things uh, I wanted to mention is uh, there's also, uh, for those of you that don't know, there is a Patriot pen as well. It's uh, for the younger grades. 
Uh, they, they write essays and so forth, same competition. I want to make sure everybody was aware of that. And uh, just moving into my testimonial, it's more about uh, being grateful and thanking everybody for what we were able to accomplish this year. Even, even though we were struck by COVID uh, and uh, we, we weren't able to meet the way we normally did, we still uh, have been able to maintain uh, uh, our systems and be able to move us forward. So I'm very grateful for that. And there's certain people I want to acknowledge right now. Uh, Doug Zeke, he's the uh, third district quartermaster and adjutant. He has put up miles and miles and miles on his vehicle, going from BFW Post to BFW Post, uh, educating, teaching, coaching, teaching, training. That's what we need. You know, it, 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 there's some people that really want to do a good job, they're not exactly sure how to do it. Uh, coaching, teaching, training. Uh, fantastic job, Doug, thank you so much. He's gonna continue. Uh, He's uh, in line to stay where, right where he's at and where he needs to be. Uh, he ain't going to know it. Okay. Uh, second, uh, uh, I, I, I wanted to change his name at the meeting we had earlier this morning, uh, but John, John Hannigan, uh, he, uh, he runs uh, the Honor Guard at 8312, and there's also a consolidated Honor Guard that they use uh, in special occasions and so forth. Uh, all around the district. I'm very proud of the Honor Guard because to me, honoring our, uh, our, our dead is, is probably the best thing uh, we do as an organization. Uh, and they've done a fantastic job this year. Uh, we've taken heavy, heavy losses. We've lost uh, some important key leaders and commanders in the district. Uh, and uh, hopefully we've honored them all. Uh, I just want to shout that out to uh, John Hannigan because they are very, very busy. And, and, and they do a fantastic job. John, not just him, there's others in the district. He's a symbol of, uh, uh, for us in the district of how well that's going. And if you, uh, if, uh, you all out there asking what you can do to help the BFW or any veterans organization, Honor Guard, join the Honor Guard. And if, you're, if your post doesn't have one, find one that does, or start one at your post. Uh, another one, he's not here at the moment, but Don Dietrich spending a, a very big uh, mentor to me. Uh, through the uh, through the BFW channels, uh, through our journey, it started back when I, I got out of the uh, military. I got fresh out of the military, and I made the mistake of asking Don Dietrich what I could help with. He lied to me. He said, "Oh, be quartermaster. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, 20 years later, I'm up here in district commander, and uh, I'm very happy that he. That, that he coached me into it, uh, into taking the tough job. Uh, I want to also, uh, uh, Dennis and Sharon Young are right up front here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my niche is digital. I think we need to move into uh, the digital arena when we're, when we're dealing with membership and everything else that we're talking about. And uh, Dennis and Sharon have, have been very, uh, very good to me in that uh, re regard, I appreciate it. Brandon, uh, Brandon Seagraves, I wish you the best next year, sir. And uh, thank you for everything this year. Uh, Fred Rojas has been a big help. Uh, he, he works at the, uh, he works uh, uh, for Montgomery County. Uh, thank you for all your support, Fred. And to uh, my two past uh, department uh, district commanders, Jerry and Gus, thank you for your support. Uh, I want to send thoughts and prayers out to Skip from uh, the River Rats, uh, West Carrollton VFW Post. Uh, hope he has a speedy recovery and thank him for all his help uh, through the year. Uh, Bob Henshaw's not here, but Vandalia, they've been a huge help to me. And I, I saved the best for the last. The last person I want to thank, I saved him for last. Harry Coleman. He was already up here, chomping up here, wanting to talk about how proud of this post he is. He should be. He should be proud. Uh, because he has done everything I've asked him to do. Uh, he's, uh, he's pushed. He's taking care of the uh, voice of democracy. And the thing I love about him the most is when the TV went to interview him, they said, hey, we'd like to get a few words for him. He put his tie on, he put his hat on, and he put his best face forward. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. We need to show who we are. Uh, with that, I'm gonna introduce our keynote speaker. But everybody, anybody that has helped me, I really appreciate it, and I'll be getting with you the whole year. But I'm not going anywhere. We're, we're going to continue mission. Charlie Mike. Uh, 
But our guest speaker is a retired master sergeant from the Air National Guard. Uh, she's been on several deployments. Uh, she's a past District 10 commander. Uh, she's our current department surgeon. Also served in many committee chairs, including Ohio uh, Veterans of Hall of Fame Executive Committee and the Ohio Women's Veterans Advisory Committee. Please welcome our state surgeon, Carrie Pfeiffer. blessings upon this district. Watch over our brothers, sisters, and comrades who have been sick, hurting, or in need. Watch over us as we continue on our way. Be with us as we continue to assist our veterans and their families. In your holy name, amen. 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 This concludes our banquet. Just a quick note, for those who may want them, there are to-go boxes with extra cabin rolls in the hallway of the Take the cabin roll if you want them. 